heaters, do you need them, what size, and what type of filtration. Start out with heaters, super easy part. Um, most freshwater fish you're gonna keep, like your tetras and your betas, your rasboras, your common stuff that you get at the fish store, they're gonna want a heater. How you decide what kind of heater you get is, rule of thumb is five watts per tank size. So if you have a 20 gallon fish tank, you would do 20 times five and you would get a 100 watt heater. Now, if you keep your house particularly cold, you might want to get like a 125, just so you have a little extra leeway there just to play around with. Um, normally, I want to say the heaters are good for plus or minus, I want to say up to 10 degrees, whatever the ambient temperature in the room is. So if you keep your room at 60, and you have the 100 watt heater in your 20 gallon, it should not struggle too hard to keep the water at 70 or higher. Um, personally, my room is usually 60 or below and my heaters have no problem keeping the tanks at 76 to 80. So I'm not too worried because um, if I can keep my room at 60 degrees year round, it all should be fine. This will also rise the question of preset heaters. Use them or not. If your tank is, I'm gonna say five gallons or under, Presets are fine. I personally have presets in all of my beta tanks. They're all five gallons or under. They work fine. They keep the temperature nice. 78 for the fishes. So if your tank is five gallons or under, I see no reason not to use a preset heater. I wouldn't trust anything bigger than that though, personally. So if you're keeping a 10 gallon and up, don't go with a preset, go with one you can adjust. Five gallons or under, presets are good. Same rule of thumb applies to five watts per gallon. Alrighty then, moving right along into what type of filtration should you use? Now there are four main types of filtration that are commonly used in the fish keep copy. The first one is hang on the back filters, second one is sponge filters, third one are canister filters, and the fourth one are sub pumps. Yes, I know there is another type of filter. There's also the under gravel filter, but for the most part we're going to be focusing on those four because those are the most commonly used, and we're going to narrow it down even more to hang on the back and sponge filter because they're in my opinion the two easiest kinds to use and if you're new to fish keeping they're going to be the ones that are most prevalent to you. So you go to PetSmart you pick up the kit. The kit comes with a hang on the back heat filter. It comes with cartridges for the filter. If you're new to fish keeping and you don't have any plants in the tank the cartridges are fine. The hang on the backs are pretty simple. You put them in the tank, you put the cartridge in, you plug it in, you fill it with water, you let it run. It'll keep water moving in the tank, it'll help filter your water. Those cartridges have carbon in them, so they'll keep the water nice and crystal clean. If you decide to use uh, plants in your tank later on, you might have to remove that filter and switch it to sponges inside the cartridge area. But for the most part, hang on the back filters are pretty much one of the easiest filters you can use. They pretty much set it and forget it. You don't have to do too much to them for them to work. You're gonna replace that cartridge maybe once a month, once every other month. It really depends on how much food you feed your fish and how gunky they get. Uh, don't be afraid if they look brown in color. Um, when you go to replace them, just take it out, throw it away, take the new one, rinse the new one under some tap water just to get the uh, dust particles off the carbon, stick it in your filter, you're good to go. A lot of people are going to say, oh, you threw out all the good bacteria on that cartridge. You threw out some of the bacteria on the cartridge. There's still going to be good bacteria in your filter box and in your intake hose that's in the fish tank itself. So you're not going to be throwing out so much bacteria that your cycle is going to hurt. Worst case, use some of the stability or the Fritz Zyme or the API quick start that we talked about in the cycling video if you're that worried. But most of the time, you're not going to be throwing out enough of the bacteria where it's going to leave a huge dent in your biological filtration. The next type of filtration is a sponge filter. Sponge filters are slowly becoming one of my favorite kind of filtration. They just require a couple extra pieces that they hang on the backs so do not. Hello, tis I, editing lefty here. If you have not yet, Go back and check out the 500 subscriber video and the Aquashella video. They are both be linked down in the description because there is still time to enter the giveaway. You have until this coming Friday, September 24th for the Aquashella video, and you have until the following Friday, September October 1st, to enter for fish food on the 500 sub giveaway. And again, thank you all so much for 500 subs on this channel. We're over that now, so love and all the support you guys are giving me lately. 
Also, if you've made it this far into the video, because I'm putting this at a random spot, um, put a comment down below that says hashtag extreme, and y'all will be entered for some winning of extreme fish food. That will be US only, and it's for everyone that watched this far in the video. If you didn't watch this far, you're, you're not going to be listening to this, so what you doing? You're supposed to watch the whole video, you crazy person. Right, hashtag extreme down below. I'll go through the comments and pick a winner. And then you can let me know what kind of fish you have, and I will pick out one of the foods I have to give away. Boom! Also, US only. Sorry, but fish food's got to stay within the USA. Alright, back to the video. So you go to Pets Cart, you pick out your 10 or 20 gallon tank. You don't want to use the hang on the bow filter because you want to flush up against the wall. So you go to decide use a sponge filter. What kind of sponge filter do you get? If you're in the United States, I'm going to say Aquarium Co-op sponge filter. They're weighted. They're a nice coarseness. They're not too fine. They're not too coarse. They're Keep Fish Keeping also has a few different kinds of sponge filters that are pretty cool. I'll throw some pictures up on the screen here for you all to look at. A few different sizes and types to look at. They're all pretty much basically the same thing. Just as you get bigger, they have different features to them. I really want to try the one that's got... um spacer biomedia and the sponge i think that one should be pretty cool i also put a link you know down there so you guys can go check them out if you want i'm sure i'll be getting some at some point to dry in my tanks and do a review on if you're not in the united states however get the ones off amazon really any of them will be fine um just make sure that if they're a super fine sponge you're gonna have to clean them more often so you got your sponge filter but you're like how does this thing work so you need some airline tubing any old airline tubing will do. Uh, and then you're gonna need to get an air pump. Now the pumps that I would recommend are the Tetra Whispers. They're pretty much weighted to the tank size. Though if you have a 20 gallon tank, you could probably get away with the 10 gallon air pump if they only have that. You're gonna cut your airline tubing however far away you want your pump from you, your tank, preferably as close as you can get it. If you're going further away, I would recommend the slightly bigger sizes. You can also, they come with a regulator valve, so you would just need to snip your airline tubing wherever you want to hook that up and push both ends together. This will allow you to adjust the airflow going to and from your sponge filter. If you have fish that like a lighter flow on the top, you of course want to turn the regulation down a little bit. Basically the sponge filter works as the air comes in and creates kind of a siphon. So the sponge filter is sucking in water and then the air bubbles are expelled out the top. It's a super easy process, and then maintenance is almost as easy. Maintenance for both of these is pretty simple, but the sponge filter, you're basically going to take it out and wring it out in some tank water and do repeat that until it comes out clean. I'll have another video on maintenance and stuff for filters coming out. But yeah, sponge filter hang on the backs are your best two bets if you're new to fish keeping. I run them in all my tanks, and I don't have a problem with clarity in water even in my tanks that have slightly dirtier fish like the African cichlids. That's basically it for filtration. Another super easy subject there. Just, again, if you're new to fish keeping, focus on the hang on the backs and focus on the sponge filters. Uh, with the hang on the backs, again, you're really only going to have to replace that cartridge once a month, maybe every other month, again, depending on how many fish and how much you feed. So honestly, buy yourself a three-pack of cartridges or a six-pack, and you'll probably be good for the duration of the next 8 to 12 months, again, depending on how much you feed and whatnot. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any other questions, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Leave really any type of interaction so I know if you guys even like these videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content and future stuff from me, because I'm hoping to do a lot more coming very soon and in the future. Um, other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a good day. Peace.